Hi, this is Tom Simpson of Simpson Racing Engines, and I'm doing this video today to sort of dispel all the myths about setting up a clutch on a Volkswagen. Uh, I learned over the years with drag racing and setting up clutches for a lot of different racers that what matters the most and, and what is not so important in clutches. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do that everyone keeps asking about is um, how do you dyno a clutch or know what the ideal disc thickness is? And so what I've done, I've, I've calculated a way. I've actually talked to a guy who used to make clutches down at Luke in Worcester and, and talked him through this testing procedure as a valid method. And it certainly works, and I've proven it in many applications. So what I do is, if you focus on this paper, I encourage you to uh, pause the video, get a good look at that, pause it, and study this. And I'll assume that you've looked at everything on this page before I move forward. But basically, what I do is I set it up, and I find the minimum and maximum usable range of the pressure plate. And here's how I do it with these numbers. So focus down here on this. So what I have here, this is actually a spring checker for valve springs. And then I just have it set up in my press uh, so that I can push on the fingers and I'm measuring the finger force. Now the finger force is just proportional to the clamping force. It's an arbitrary number, but it gives me a way to graph it and you'll see what this graph looks like, that it will look just like what's in the drawing I just showed you. The measurements I'm taking are actually shoulder height measurements right here. I'm measuring this dimension right here and using that for the bottom axis of my graph. So I'm going to slowly pump on this thing and you can watch this pressure climb and it does something rather interesting as I do that. As I go up you can see the pressure goes up and up and up and we're going, um, we're up that linear part of the front scale and then it kind of peaks out around 400 here. You'll see I keep pumping, I'm pumping, and it's not moving, it's staying. This is our usable range. And then what happens if I go too far, look what happens. Very dramatic drop off. I mean, very dramatic. And, and that's, this is actually the point of yield. I'm going to back it off, and we'll do this again real quick. And you can see, I'll do it a little quicker. We go up, we flatten out for a couple pumps, and then we start falling off. Okay? So I've taken measurements to know exactly what that range is. And refer back to my chart here and we can see again that we've come come up to this point on the chart and this is where i say okay that's good and the pressure plate works and i take it to the point of yield and actually want to be a little bit less than that point um, um if you studied any any sort of stress and strain curves in engineering you know that this is where the steel is actually giving up or the spring is actually letting go you're going beyond the elastic limit of the spring so you really shouldn't be here so ideally i set a minimum max I back it up against the flywheel depth and I come up with ideal disc thickness. And in most cases, what I've found is that just grabbing these couple clutches off of my shelf here, I found that the thickness can vary quite a bit. Here's a used Kennedy at 325, and that's way too thick for this clutch. Uh, this will slip badly. But then I found a, a good used um, Cushlock disc at 285, and according to my calculations, that's right on the thickest disc I could put in there. Well, that's an ideal scenario. Now it's got room to wear. I'm not going to lose any clamping force. And, uh, and that's the best way to set this up. And if you look back again here at this, you can see that I've written down the, um, the clamping force that I read on the gauge. And, and my calculation for the ideal disc thickness is written right on the clutch. And as the clutch wears, or if I resurface the clutch, I retest it so that I can then use it again. And, uh, and this clutch actually started life at 600 pounds. And then after a couple of years of racing, it was down to 430 pounds, and now it's down to 380. So, so they do wear out and lose uh, grip over time as they get hot. Um, this is Tom Simpson. Thank you much for, uh, for paying attention, and that's the best way I can find to explain this. Thank you.